So I want to thank everybody who's joining me today on this YouTube video and following along as I talk about municipal taxes here in East Brunswick. I deliberately picked August since this is the time of year that new tax bills go out and it's always a time that, and a topic of course, that's an, an area of big concern to residents living here in um, East Brunswick and the state in general. And part of the reason why I wanted to discuss this is because there's a lot of mis misinformation on property taxes, how it's calculated, where we stand compared to other towns, uh, what uh, and how tax rates are uh, calculated, assessments, all of this is an area of concern to residents in town. In fact, whenever we've done polling, it still remains decade after decade the number one area of concern for residents that are living here in the township. And we've also got a lot of press as a state being one of the largest taxed states in the entire country, a major reason why a lot of people are leaving New Jersey. So let's dive a little bit uh, into our issue uh, to explain your tax bill here in East Brunswick. For those of you who are not from East Brunswick, you're more than welcome to follow along uh, because in general, the issues that we face here in East Brunswick are not very much different than the issues that you probably face in your own towns. And the way in which we calculate taxes, the way in which it's divided up, the issues are very much similar. So you're more than welcome to join. So let's dive right in. What I wanted to start with is a tax bill. And since I was the subject uh, of my last election of having my tax bills shown to everybody in town, and tax bills are public records, uh, you have every right to look at and know what taxes are being paid by any entity in the township, whether it's a residential property tax bill or whether it's an industrial or commercial property tax bill. Those are public documents. So we're going to start with mine. If you look at the actual bill, the format is generally very similar from um, whether it's a township bill that's going to, uh, in fact, it's exactly the same whether it goes to a resident or it goes to a business, it is the same. The first thing that I want you to, to look at is the top left corner where it says assessed valuation of information. That basically gives, gives you these town assessors assessment of your property, which is generally a combination of the value for the land and the value of the improvement which is almost always the home itself. And that becomes your net taxable value, the number that by which we're going to use to assess taxes. If you then look at the top right-hand corner, it actually explains and breaks down those taxes into the different areas in which taxes are, um, are allocated. Keep in mind that the municipal government collects all the taxes for the county, it collects it for the school board, it collects it for the library and your fire districts. And there's three different fire districts here in East Brunswick. So depending upon which fire district you're in, your bill may be a little bit different. And that's usually the only thing that varies. And those areas are taxed individually by those bodies, but collected by the municipal government. And then once that money comes in, we directly give back a check to each one of those taxing bodies. So if you look at the tax rate in the top right hand corner, you'll see a portion that's allocated to county tax and the open space that's run by the county, the local school board tax, which is almost always the largest portion of your bill, the municipal tax, and then um, the library and your fire district. And it'll tell you which fire district you're in, one of the three. That total, no matter where you are in town, should come up to around 11.1. Um, the only difference being the small portion that goes to your fire district, depending upon which district you live in. And if you actually look at the pie chart that um, is going to be provided to you as we're looking, you will see that that's broken down by percentage. And so if you look at those different tax rates, if you look at it on a percentage basis, you'll see that roughly 65% of your total tax bill goes to the public schools. About 20% goes to the municipal government, uh, about 14% to the county, and the balance goes to your fire districts, the library, uh, and open space areas. If you didn't believe the pie chart, you could look directly on your tax bill. So if you go back to the tax bill uh, that we started out with, you'll see that underneath the explanation of taxes, you'll see it says 2019 preliminary tax. And underneath that, you'll see a little area that says distribution of taxes before REAP. 
REAP stands for people who get rebates back from the federal, from the state government, generally elderly who get money back for programs that help uh, offset the cost of property taxes if you make under a certain income. Uh, that's generally not included in this number. Um, but the pie chart that you just saw should be reflected pretty much in the same percentages that you see here right on your tax bill. So all of that's there for you um, to actually be able to see. So what then you want to move to is um, a little bit of an explanation why you're getting your bill in August. Most businesses try to do their business year and their financial year based on a calendar year starting in January. Government doesn't work that way, at least state government doesn't work that way, and unfortunately, because a lot of state aid um, goes into both your school, library, and municipal tax uh, bills, um, a lot of our bills uh, can't be generated until the summer. And that's because there's money that comes in from the state, uh, which doesn't come to the municipal government until sometime around, or that number isn't divulged until sometime around March or April which is why your municipal government for the first quarter of every year works on, an, uh, uh, on a budget that's not final. Uh, it assumes a small percent increase over the year before, and it's not an actual budget until the state numbers are made available to us, and that's why our budget isn't generally adopted for your municipal portion of taxes until sometime generally in April, the second quarter of the year. Numbers for your school board is very similar. They don't typically get state aid numbers until sometime around March or April. Another reason why they can't provide us with the tax levy until later in the year. County government doesn't actually do their uh, calculations until sometime in June. And as most of you know, the state uh, ultimately is the determinant on state aid. And the last two years, we've had issues where state hasn't been able to come up with a budget until the very last minute, usually around July. So until all of those numbers are reconciled, it is impossible for your town to get all those taxing bodies together, uh, come up with the levy, generate a bill, and send it out to you, which is why it ends up being August. The last two years, your bill was actually delayed a little bit because of what went on in Trenton and the time frame it took for them to come to a, a, a final budget. And so we delayed even our August um, by a, a little bit just to make up for the fact that we were rushed, like every other town in New Jersey, to get those bills out in a very short period of time uh, because of that. So hence, that's why your bill ends up being sent out in the summer. Uh, if you also look then down at the bottom of the bill, you see that it's broken up into quarterly payments, two for 2018 for the remaining two quarters of 2018. And then there's two coupons for 2019, which are estimates. The reason why the two quarters that are for 2018 are generally a little bit higher than the quarters for 2019 is because the estimate for next year is just exactly that. It is an estimate based on your taxes from the year before. If there's an increase or a decrease, that will be reflected in the remaining two payments this year. So essentially, any increase from the year before will be made up for in the last two payments of the year. <clears throat> for those of you who were participants in the Shop East Brunswick program, a program that uh, I brought and council approved for the township in order to incentivize people to shop uh, in local stores, restaurants, and merchants, there was a reward for shopping. And if that accumulated to any uh, amount of money, it was saved in the bank and then transferred to the township for it to be reduced in your property tax bill. The first reduction occurred this year uh, because you have to wait for the new tax bills to come out. If any of you did get a reduction due to a rebate from the Shop East Brunswick program, that was deducted from the first payment of the new tax bill, which essentially is the third quarter of the year. So if you look at, for instance, my bill in the bottom right-hand corner, which is the uh, payment that's due for August of 18, the one that's essentially due, you'll see that I got a credit of $97.80 off of that bill. And that's why that one quarter is reduced compared to the, two th the fourth quarter of 2018. And going forward, as that people use the card, as more shops and merchants participate, 
hopefully uh, more people will use it and the ability for us to deduct a more sizable uh, chunk off of your taxes uh, can be realized. So that's how, you know, generally the format of, of our bill and most other townships bills will look. I want to talk for a couple of seconds about tax rate. Um, the tax rate, if you look again at the upper right hand corner of your tax bill, is 11.1. .1. But you need to keep in mind that with that tax bill, um, what I'm going to show you next is a slide that shows our assessed ratio um, compared to the true value of your property. And if you look at that, it goes back about all the way to 2009. The assessed value of property in East Brunswick is generally held at roughly, and you can see under the column that says um, equalized ratio, we've been holding somewhere around 25, 26%, which is why if you look at my tax bill, the property value is assessed at $269,900, but, but that's only 25% of the real value. If you equalize it out to 100%, it would be roughly a million dollars. And you could do the same thing for your own property. It's roughly, the real value of your property is going to be roughly four times whatever our assessed value is because we assess it at roughly 25%. Every town has a different equalized ratio. Some towns bill it at 100%, and so it's 100% of your assessed value. Others bill it out at all different um, uh, uh, numbers or percentages. But if you look at the different columns down, if you look at that assessed true valuation page, you'll see that real property value uh, is listed at, and this is now billion, so $1.898 billion, but the actual equalized value is more like $7.5 billion because the value is 25%. So in the end, if we're taxing you 25% of $100 or 100% of $25, it comes out to the same number. But the problem is that when you try to compare our tax rates to other towns, it really is a very difficult comparison to make because you have to know what equalized ratio. We're using 25%. If you equalized our ratio to 100%, to then you would have to take the 11.1 .1 tax rate and divide that by four. If you do that, let's go to the next slide, and that shows you what East Brunswick's effective tax rate is compared to other towns. If you look at that and put everybody's equalized rate at 100%, you will see that East Brunswick is not the most expensive tax rate in Middlesex County, contrary to what most people believe. Most towns um, to the left of where we stand on this graph actually have higher tax rates than East Brunswick. The towns to the right have lower tax rates. And the reality is that if you kind of look at what those towns on the left have in common and those towns on the right have in common, generally the towns on the left, and this is general, have less uh, uh, open space and less uh, ability for commercial uh, portion and contribution to the tax base, whereas those that are on the right have more open space and the ability to offset some of the taxes by industrial and commercial space that we just don't have here. So as a matter of comparison, that's a way of, of looking at where we stand compared to other towns. The other uh, slide that I'd like you to take a look at, and this is really kind of simple math for any of you who've gone through algebra, uh, is really is looking at a bell-shaped curve. And what I'm trying to um, bring to people's mind when I show you these bell-shaped curves is that whether you're assessed at 25% or whether you're assessed at 100%, what really matters is that the assessment is accurate because your taxes are based on the assessment and we alter the percentage. So again, if I charge 100% of $25 or 25% of $100, it's still the same number. So what we need and we have uh, in our town is a really good assessing department that most of the town's property, whether it's residential property, 
or whether it's commercial property, is assessed appropriately. And that's what's going to help us in the event that we were ever to be required to do a mandated township reassessment. Because when you do a reassessment, what essentially we're being asked to do is to move to 100%, to be taxed at 100% of assessed value. And if your value is correct, it brings you back to the same conclusion. If everybody falls within a small bell-shaped curve, the one that's the red one in the middle, then when you, the only people who are going to be affected the most by revaluation of your homes are going to be those people that live at the margin, who's really, who their assessments really aren't that accurate. And so whether you're over-assessed or under-assessed, those are the people that are more likely to be affected by a reassessment. Those people, if it was, if our town, and that's actually what our town looks like, more of that red bell-shaped curve. If the bell-shaped curve for our town is more like the green one, where there's really poor uh, assessments and it's all over the chart, then those, then the margins include a much greater number of people. And in that instance, when you reassess, those people that are way over-assessed and way under-assessed, there's going to be more of those people. And as a result, your taxes will change dramatically. Fortunately, we've done a good job of keeping property assessed at its proper value. So as long as we remain more under a curve that looks like the red bell-shaped curve, to incur a cost of what will probably be about $3 million that we will all have to bear or bond for, but in one way or another pay, to do a reassessment which will affect a handful of people doesn't really make sense. And so as long as you have confidence in knowing that your assessment is a fair one, then you needn't worry about the potential down the line that we have a mandated reassessment because your property taxes have been properly accounted for and the percentage uh, of equalized value has been adjusted so that you are paying the correct amount of taxes. What I'd like to talk about next, since we're on the subject of taxes, would be the next slide, which looks at actual taxes in the township um, and its increases over the last close to 10 years. Um, that's under a slide called History of Tax Rates for Real Property. And it, what that does is it breaks it down for the last 10 years. Now, keep in mind, 2009 was just at the height of the recession. And it looks at what the different rate increases were from 2009 to 2018, broken down by a total, by your school budget, your municipal budget, your library, county, and open space. And so you could see there has been a trend up years, upwards. Uh, there are expenses that do the township and the schools and all these different taxing bodies do uh, incur, and they're reflected in those, those rates. And so you could see there's some years where there's been um, rather steep increases, others where there haven't been at all. Um, an example of where there really hasn't been one at all was this year. If you look at your municipal tax bill and compare last year's, now again, municipal is what I'm responsible for, it's only 20% of your total bill, but if you look at 2017 to 2018, it went up 0 0.002 uh, on the tax, it's virtually no increase at all. So when I made a public announcement that I wasn't increasing residential property taxes for the municipal government, I was correct. Municipal government stayed flat. Uh, can't control the taxing bodies that I have no control over. I don't control the school board, I don't control the county, I don't control the library. And we'll talk about those in a couple of seconds, but just wanted you to get a sense from that graph of where we stand with taxes. The other thing that you need to know about those increases is that there are mandated caps on the amount that the schools and the township can increase. Those tax caps were put in place about 10 years ago under Governor Christie. And those caps include spending caps and they include your tax levy caps. Uh, and there are exceptions because there's expenses that can occur, that a township can occur that are outside of their control. Most of those costs, for instance, would be in debt uh, and debt service uh, and, and in some instances, healthcare expenses if they exceed the, uh, the state rate 
um, by a certain margin, then those are expenses that you had no control over, and in those instances, the town is allowed to exceed those caps uh, because they couldn't control those costs. But vast majority of expenses are within our control, and those are the things and the reasons for which there are caps. So those things are included and is part of every budget hearing. Uh, if you choose to uh, participate or listen, we'll include a discussion on those things that are um, uh, and why we try to keep within the, uh, the, the tax cap. Let's talk a little bit about municipal government. I will talk about schools, I'll talk about the library, but right now I want to talk about the area that I have the most control over along with your council, and that is the control of your municipal government. As I said before, municipal government collects the taxes from the tax levy that the school gives, the tax levy that the county gives. We simply collect it and then write a check right back out to those, those bodies. I have no control over those taxing bodies. They have uh, uh, an obligation to provide information to you, but it's our role in municipal government to um, bill out anything that they have uh, assigned through the tax levy. The unfair part of all of this is that should somebody go through a tax appeal and you uh, were to uh, win that appeal, whether it's a business or whether it's a residential home, the township bears the burden of refunding any rebate or a refund. And we bear 100%. Even though we've only collected 20% of the tax bill, I cannot go back to the schools and say, uh, John Smith is due a thousand dollar refund and now I want six hundred and fifty dollars from the school because we wrote out a check for six hundred and fifty. I can't do that. Can't get money back from the county or the library or the fire districts. The town has to bear that a hundred percent. So there is a little bit of an unfairness in that, um, but East Brunswick is not alone. And as long as uh, property values stay stable, then the number of appeals uh, should be relatively low and the number of times that we have to do that would be minimal. It clearly was a huge issue for the township right after the recession when property values dropped so dramatically. Many, many people came in and refinanced and the town had to take a big hit because we had to give back all of the money that was due to people legitimately and businesses um, for uh, those reevaluations, and we could not recoup that from any of the other taxing bodies. So that's something that you, you, you should know. What I'd like to go now to is a slide that talks about um, the classification of real estate or, or real property. And what that actually shows you, again, goes back to 2009, is that we are primarily a residential town. Let me say that again. We are primarily a residential town. That was what our founders, that's what people um, many decades before who governed this township um, wanted in their master plan, that we really didn't want to be a harbor for businesses and for industry and manufacturing. We wanted to be a residential town. Well, that's reflected in this particular slide where you could look at the value of residential property versus commercial industrial apartments and then the value we placed on, on vacant land or farm. We are almost just shy of 80% residential property. So when we have to pay our bills, the vast, large majority of that bill goes to residential property taxes. And unfortunately, that's our burden. And compared to other towns, um, for instance, um, North Brunswick's about 50% uh, residential. Uh, Woodbridge even less. So they get a lot larger influx to the tax base from areas outside of residential property taxes. So for those of you who really want to see a meaningful reduction in property taxes, it's not going to come from cutting. Most of us have done as much cutting as we possibly can, whether that's the school or the library or the township. We've we are a pretty well-run ship, and I will get to that in a second because you don't have to take my word for that. They, there are bodies that come out and evaluate townships and schools, whether it's auditors or outside agencies that give independent um, reviews. But the reality is that 
if you really want to see a meaningful reduction in property taxes, we need to allow the town to grow and to grow responsibly and to grow at the, um, uh, with the township being the one that directs where and how that growth occurs. We need to grow our commercial. We could easily grow some of our industrial within areas that could handle it. Um, and we even need to grow some of our residential uh, areas so that we have more money coming into the tax base. That it's, it's a math equation. If you have more money coming into the tax base, then the percent and the amount that each one of us has to bear will come down. But if we do not allow any responsible growth to occur, and we continue to watch people leave not only East Brunswick but the state, then there's no, uh, no hope, really, that your taxes are going to stabilize or potentially go down in any meaningful way. So again, that slide speaks for itself. Our commercial uh, contribution to our tax base is probably somewhere around 15%. Our industrial contribution is probably even less. And 80%, 80% of our responsibility for the tax base comes from residents. So we need to try to, to change that. When we look at how the, the municipality gets money and spends money, I'm going to spend a little bit of time looking at the next two slides. The first one looks at um, revenue. And that revenue is on a pie-shaped chart. And you can see from the revenue pie that close to 63% of all of the expense, all the revenue that comes into the town comes from residents, from, from property taxes. And again, that's a combination of residents, commercial, and industrial. We get local revenue, which is a 31%. That's all of the fees that the cha town charges, whether it be fees for construction, fees for permits, fees for licenses, um, that uh, end of uh, the business of the township brings in about 30 to 31 percent of our revenue. And then the remaining 6 percent comes from state aid, which I told you earlier has remained relatively flat, um, and that number doesn't generally come in until the first end of the first quarter of each year. So that's where our money comes in from. Again, like most other townships in New Jersey, the bulk of revenues are coming in from property taxes. If you look then at how we actually spend our money, that's on the next slide, the majority blue area that you see on the slide, close to 26% of all of the taxes that come into the municipal government goes to public safety. We pay a and put a high price on maintaining the safety of all 50,000 people that live in this community and those that visit and come here um, for any reason. Public safety is a number one issue. We have a main commercial corridor on Route 18. We're right off of the turnpike. Uh, we put a large value on keeping the town safe. That number includes the cost of all of our uh, public safety officials, police, and allied um, uh, help, and it includes their pensions. It's a big number, but it's something that we um, are willing to accept in order to get in return the safety that we all enjoy here in town. The second largest area is insurance. Uh, like most businesses, uh, we need to provide insurance, whether that's health insurance, workers, uh, comp, uh, workers comp, liability. Insurance is, uh, is a growing concern for almost every business in this country, and government is like a business, and our expenses are, are, are significant. This last year, we were able to put a lid, actually we reduced uh, by refinancing uh, and sending out uh, our, um, going with the new companies, we actually went out to bid and got new rates and our insurance cost for the first time in a long time stabilized. And uh, looking at uh, the next year's numbers, if we continue on the same trend, uh, we're likely to be able to do the same thing again. Uh, we're finally got a real good handle on our health insurance costs, which is the largest component of that insurance number. And so I'm hoping that by keeping a lid on that, most of you might recall that for the two years before I uh, took office, the largest reason for any municipal increase came from the increases in health care costs. And I'm hoping again this year that we can go out with no increase on that, and that will have a huge effect on the ability to control 
municipal expenses. The red area is our debt. And like any other town, like any other home, there's a healthy level of debt that every one of us needs to maintain. And our town has done an extraordinarily good job of keeping control of our debt. Just so that you understand, despite the fact that that represents 14%, two thirds of that debt actually is debt that's held by the Board of Education and held by the fire districts. Because of our good rating in the bond market and our rating in Moody's, the ability for the township to go out and secure debt can't be beaten. The schools, the, the fire districts, if they went out to the market, could never get the rates that our township's able to get. So as a result, we do shared services with the school board every year and shared services with fire districts when they want to invest in equipment or hardware, trucks, uh, and that money comes from us being able to bond. Um, so two-thirds of that whole column of debt is really shared services that we're doing with the Board of Education and the fire districts. A third is really only used by the township for our capital projects. Big, big um, uh, factor in how we are rated by the, the financial markets. The green area talks about and has out, usually is responsible for our public works, garbage pickup, um, recycling, that's a, a fairly expensive cost, and I have done a, 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 a Facebook Live on Public Works and uh, Garbage uh, about two months ago. I think it would be worth reviewing that because that's an area that contract is actually up for renewal in uh, next year. The remaining 31% is what we call discretionary, but it's really not that discretionary because we've got a lot of expenses that uh, are incurred by the town for all the services that those of you who live here and enjoy on a regular basis. We provide um, parks and recs programming, uh, tree programs, uh, all of the uh, uh, townships uh, activities involving uh, all of our redevelopment work, all of the work that we pay professionals to help us with, all comes out of this, what we call discretionary, but at the end of the day, there's really not that much money left. We're very, very, very uh, tightly controlled when it comes to how we do our expenses. And if you don't want to believe me, then um, you can go look at the next slide, which comes out of Moody's Investors Services directly. Uh, all towns uh, look for um, bonds when it comes to uh, providing the ability to do capital projects and to uh, grow their town. And as a result, uh, Moody's, which is the largest uh, investor service, has given us the second highest bond rating you could possibly get, like I referenced earlier. It's the reason why people can bond and do projects at such low interest rates that you could never get in the market. But in addition to that, what they do is they um, give each town a rating in terms of their level of risk. And ours, if you could look at this letter, is uh, rated a MIG-1, which essentially means that we are the most highly recognized or one of the most highly recognized towns. What they take into consideration when they look at a MIG rating is your government. They take a look at the stability of the people that work there. They look at your finance and debt ratios. They look at your uh, how government is actually working, what type of services that you're providing, and they rank all of those in a very methodical way and come up with a rating. You can't get higher than a MIG-1, which is why I don't ask you to believe just me. When we have auditors and investor services who are all outside forces, who have no political party affiliation, have no reason to um, do anything other than provide you with the factual information based on the information that uh, they get, we consistently come out being rated very high. One of the things that they look at, again, is government. And we've had Democratic governments in this town, we've had Republican governments in this town. They're not looking at any one particular party, they're looking at our history. And general, we've had an extraordinary history of township stability where government works with the administrators and does um, a superb job of managing the township. One of the areas they look at is whether or not the town has ever declared itself in emergency. 
many times people will try to play games where an election is coming up and they're going to come out with no increase and then what they'll end up doing is they borrow for Peter and Paul and then the following year will go out and borrow at levels that exceed the spending levels and spending caps and in order for them to do that they have to declare an emergency to go beyond those caps. Those are games that many towns actually do. We in East Brunswick have never declared the town to be in, in an emergency and have never done that. And it doesn't matter which political party was running the town, it has never happened and for the foreseeable future will never happen. So I think that's an important thing that those of you who live here should know, that the town is well run. I'm going to look a little bit now at um, the schools. The um, schools, like I told you earlier, are a separate taxing body. They have their own board of education that does the management for the schools themselves. And it is still and remains the number one reason that people cite for moving to East Brunswick. Clearly, um, people move here um, for a reputation that we've had for a very long time. Our schools have always been well-rated. So for those of you who may no longer have children in the school system, it doesn't matter. The value of your home, the marketability of the township, in large part, not only, but in large part, is predicated on the top-notch school system that we have and we maintain here. There are, however, some facts that you should know about the school system and, and, and numbers because I hear it in the literature, I hear it in social media, I hear people uh, all around town um, making statements and I think if you're going to make a statement you should have the facts. The facts remain that our enrollment numbers over the last 10 to 15 years have gone down, has gone down. You could look at the uh, slide that I provided to you, it says East Brunswick Public School Enrollment. Those numbers come directly from the Department of Education website. You could verify them yourself very easily. You could see that we peaked out around the years 2005 and 6 at around an enrollment of 9,000 people, 9,000 students. Now, uh, in the last year, we're at somewhere around 8,000. So in the last 10 to 15 years, we have dropped about 1,000 kids in the school system compared to its peak. Um, that all at the same time that your tax uh, uh, bill from the schools has continued to go up. And the next slide will show you exactly that. Uh, that number uh, you could see on these blue graphs from the right being 2009 and the left being 2018 is the increases that have occurred in that same period of time that enrollment has dropped. And it does not include state numbers. So they get money from the state on top of that. 2009-2010 um, was a year that the state made real draconian drops in the amount of school aid that was given to schools and that pr precipitated uh, the reason for a large increase in the amount of money that had to be contributed by residents because uh, of the shortfall that was being given to schools from the state. Uh, so that does explain a good reason why uh, you did see uh, increases in the uh, school tax at the same time that enrollment was dropping. One of the other things that you need to understand about the schools is that their formula uh, is different here in Jersey than almost any other state. In New Jersey, we believe in fairness. And so what these courts uh, Supreme Court in the state of New Jersey upheld is the Abbott School funding, even though it's not really called that any longer, but essentially townships pay uh, the amount of property taxes towards public schools based on their socioeconomic status or the, the affluence of the community. So communities that are relatively poor uh, get a much larger portion of state aid than townships that are more affluent. So a township like Short Hills or Milburn or Upper Saddle River, they get virtually nothing from the state, very little if anything at all. Towns like Newark and Irvington and, and um, uh, Jersey City will get a lot more because they're generally um, less affluent. The problem with the system, of course, is that, that the, the towns that are at the lowest level haven't changed in years. So we all know that places like Jersey City and Hoboken um, have had an influx of of, of um, 
uh, a, a increase in their values, and yet the, uh, they still remain um, these A districts, and it goes by letter. So the lowest district, the lowest socioeconomics are given a letter A, the highest are a J. Um, J's would be places like I said, Short Hills, Milburn. East Brunswick is an I. We are one below the most affluent districts. So unfortunately, we get a limited amount of money from the state. Hence, a largest portion, the largest portion of your tax bill for the schools is coming from your property taxes. And that's something that your school board can't change, I can't change, that's something that would only change at the, uh, at the state level. One of the efforts that the governor did put through this year was to increase the amount of state aid given to schools. Uh, as a result, that was published within the last month of the amount of money um, that he's going to be giving to each school district to increase their funding and hope uh, was that it would help uh, townships reduce the portion of your tax bill related to property taxes from the schools because if your largest portion of your tax bill is coming from the schools and the state were to uh, reimburse towns a little bit more of the funding that was taken away, um, the hope was that school boards would return some of that to the taxpayers and give them a bit of a tax break. So the amount of money that was returned to East Brunswick Public School Systems this year came out to $562,000. Unfortunately, because of uh, um, whatever expenses the school has, uh, they did not return any of that to the taxpayers. So you will not see any benefit at all from the governor increasing the amount of money that was returned uh, by increasing the funding this year. Um, hopefully, if he's able to continue on his promise, um, more money will come back to school districts and um, you need to impress upon the school board to return some of that to you so you could see that at least the tax portion of your bill from the schools stabilize or hopefully go down. If we look at the um, library, again, another separate taxing body, again, they are an independent body. S libraries get their money based on what's called a millage rate. The millage rate is based on assessed property value and it's the average of the last three years. Uh, and that number is calculated every year. So if property values go up a lot or down a lot in one year, you're not gonna see a big bubble or a big drop to the libraries because you're averaging the last three years. When you look at your tax bill, again, if you go back to the uh, tax bill at the beginning, there is a portion of the bill that says money that goes to the municipal library. That's based on the millage rate, and the town is obligated to collect that, to charge that, collect it, and pay that over to the library. If you look at the next slide, you will see every single township in Middlesex County, uh, the millage rate for 2017, and then in the middle column is what towns can, if they choose, give in addition from the municipal portion of their budget to the libraries as an addition to the millage rate that they are obligated to collect. So if you look at East Brunswick, which is right underneath Woodbridge at the top, you'll see that our library has gotten an additional $1.2 million, and that's been um, something that we've made a commitment to do for several, uh, for many years now. We give way above what the millage rate is, which is all that's required to be given to the library, so that the total budget that the library got in 2017 was about $3.69 uh, million. It was the 2.4 that was required under the millage rate in addition to the 1.2 extra. In 2018, uh, the millage rate actually went up for the library. It went up to about 2.5, so it went up by about um, $90,000. And, um, but in an attempt to try to keep a lid on um, municipal government expenses, uh, I reduced the uh, extra from the 1.2 to 1.1. So essentially, the library went up 90,000 on the millage rate, but down 100 on the extra that I took out of our municipal budget, uh, so that they basically stayed flat. Uh, I don't think that was a big price to have to pay. Um, I don't think it warrants shutting down the library. It didn't warrant any negative press. I think we all need to 
do the best we can uh, to cut corners. And, and at the end, we all ended up coming to uh, a, a happy medium. And the library is functioning just fine at that flat budget, just like I did with all the municipal expenses. But so that you understand how the money works, the 1.2 comes out of that portion, if you recall, from the pie-shaped curve of my expenses for municipal government. The 2.4 is, is the millage rate that becomes taxed uh, separately and goes directly to the library. And so, I, again, we need to, um, we like to keep a, a well-run, highly uh, uh, recognized library, but we need to do it within a, a fair budget. And I think at the end of the day, we, we did just that. Uh, and we have a library that we should be very proud of. If you look at the, uh, the last area that I'm, actually the second to last area is fire districts. Uh, many of you, if you look in the corner, again, at your tax bill, you'll see that there's a different, uh, you could see a difference in your tax rate. And the only reason you would see that is because each of the three fire districts are separate taxing bodies, uh, and they have slightly different rates. So any variation in anybody's tax bill or rate um, will, will come from the differences in the fire districts. Uh, those, again, separate taxing bodies. They have elections of their own. Um, most of the, the, uh, the, actually all of the firefighters that work in our town are volunteer fighting fires. So the expenses that we are uh, incurring at the fire districts are not really for personnel. It's more for um, equipment, the trucks, maintaining of the buildings. That's where your fire district money um, is going. And those are, again, open to the public to vote. Uh, fire districts have their own elections. Those are announced in the paper. You have every right to go and vote on any one of their expenses. So if there's any question about what's going on with your uh, fire district, you can contact them directly. And, and, you, and every one of us has the right uh, to vote uh, and to voice our opinions through that vote uh, during fire district elections. We also have that county bill. You saw that on the corner. And the county bill, roughly about 14% of your tax bill, again, a separate taxing body. They come up with their numbers sometime around June. Uh, and uh, that's paying for all of your county services, which includes your uh, county roads. Uh, we have a, a large number of county roads in town. Many of you have seen a lot of the work being done on those roads this summer. That's part of your county budget. County arts and, um, and um, culture, recreation, senior services, veteran services. They have um, uh, the sheriff's office, probate. Uh, so there's many, many, the municipal, Middlesex County Utility Authority. They have the Improvement Authority. They invest in many of the towns because uh, they, like East Brunswick, have an extraordinarily high uh, bond rating. Uh, they've been very, very well run, and as a result, they're also allowed to invest in communities, and they'll utilize their good, good rating to be able to provide those type of funds. So in order to, prov to provide all of that, um, that's really where a lot of your county tax dollars go. They've also done an extraordinarily job, extraordinary job of purchasing a lot of open space for towns like ours that want to do the best that we can to preserve some of our area and not overdevelop, the county has helped by coming in and purchasing large areas that will be preserved and cannot be built on. So that's where a lot of your county tax dollars go to. And that, again, is a portion of the tax bill which we collect and turn directly over to the county. So uh, in conclusion, uh, and sort of to sum everything up, there's some key points that I just want everybody to get out of this. I, I don't want to get buried in numbers, but the overarching um, take-home lessons would be that you do have a very well-run town, um, and that you don't have to take my word for. That comes from auditors, and it comes from outside agencies who do exactly that. Without any bias, they evaluate towns, and we have consistently scored at the highest rating you could possibly get. Um, so I think that's something that we should be extraordinarily proud of, and I'm happy that we have such qualified and great workers uh, and, and, and professionals working with us and within the township that could provide that level of service. It's what you deserve. I also feel that um, despite um, rumor and, 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 and public perception, we are not the highest taxed community 
in Middlesex County. Uh, when you equalize our uh, ratios and compare them to other towns, um, we're definitely not the least taxed, but we're definitely not the most. I also want people to recognize that we're still primarily a residential town. And until we agree as a town that we're going to responsibly allow the town to grow, both at its residential end and at its commercial end, it will be very difficult to see any meaningful reduction in property taxes. It's just a math function. We need the pie to be bigger. And once the pie is bigger, if we keep control of our expenses, the amount that each person has to contribute will go down. But we have to do this responsibly. I also want to make sure that you recognize that municipal taxes have finally stabilized. This past year, I did not increase taxes at all at the municipal level. Your bill, of course, is made up of different taxing bodies which we're required to collect for. I can't speak for them, but your municipal tax bill remains stable. If we have uh, control of our insurance costs again this year, which we expect. Our debt ratio is extraordinarily low. Um, if we can continue to, to keep to those big expenses and keep those under control, our uh, expenses when it comes to employees uh, has been kept under control. We've limited our growth. Um, many people are doing two job, uh, one job um, that two people were doing before, likes being done exactly in private industry, we've done everything that we can to do that. We've begun to see a, a stabilization. I'm hoping very much that we can continue that trend going forward. I hope that the other taxing bodies could do the same thing, because once we can do that, you really will start to see some uh, leveling or hopefully reduction in your taxes. Um, you've got great services in town that many instances you don't realize are incorporated in your taxes. You have. Uh, uh, garbage and recycling services. We have a great parks and recreation department, tree programs, um, that the cost of which is extraordinarily low compared to many other towns. A great library. You have a great uh, senior center, which provides many, many opportunities for seniors that a lot of other towns simply can't provide. Uh, so for your tax dollars, you're getting a lot of services, and we don't intend or want that to ever change. We have to really think about the extra money that we give to libraries. We have to think about keeping control of our school board taxes, something that I don't have control over, but you're the voters. This is where you need to make your feelings known. And I think that uh, at the end of the day, you should be extraordinarily proud of the town that you live in. Nobody has every answer to every question. Um, you're more than welcome to come here voice your concerns, ask your questions. If you have great ideas, nobody's cornered the market on every great idea. Um, but um, I'm proud of what we've accomplished. I'm proud of the town that I live in. I'm extraordinarily proud of our schools, extraordinarily proud of our library. Um, and we have great citizens here who, who really, w I think, by and large, want the best for the town. So I thank you for, for listening. Um, I thank you for uh, spending this, this time with me. I hope that it was informative. And should you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me here at the mayor's office in East Brunswick. Thank you and have a wonderful day.